all over the map between uh, sobbing, uh, crying, praying. Uh, it, it, several times he said he was going to come out, and of course he never did. It was, it was virtually up and down the entire day for 11 hours. That's Douglas County Chief Deputy Tom Wheeler talking to reporters describing the intensity of Friday's 11-hour standoff that turned deadly. Take a look. This is video right behind us. Bullets shattering the glass in one of the windows of that home. And here's what we know at this hour. A 911 call came in Friday morning around 1030. The man said his girlfriend was being held hostage at 140th in Miami. Deputies rushed to the scene and say they found 45-year-old Kenneth Clark barricaded inside holding that woman hostage. Friday afternoon, she left the home safely. Negotiators continued talking with Clark for hours, but around 10 p.m., gunshots went off. Deputies sent a robot inside and confirmed Clark and two men were dead. Now, this morning, we're getting some insight into how this all started. KETV News Watch 7's Camilla Ortiz joins us live from the scene with the latest. Now, we just spoke with law enforcement. He told me that Crime Lab is just about wrapped up here and that the family just arrived on scene. They obviously have a lot to deal with this morning. Now, Douglas County Chief Deputy Tom Wheeler says the suspect, Ken Kenneth Clark, lived in this home you see behind me and that the hostage he took was his girlfriend. Now, according to Wheeler, the girlfriend returned to the home Friday morning to grab her things and move out, and that's when the incident started. Throughout the day, negotiators talked with Clark through his cell phone. They say his mood changed several times and he was crying and praying. When law enforcement deployed tear gas around 10 o'clock last night to try and force Clark out, investigators heard what they believed was a gunshot. They say they used a robot to enter the home, finding Clark's body in an upstairs bedroom and two other men dead. Now, Wheeler credits the fact that no law enforcement were hurt in this situation, thanks in part to the work of first responders and negotiators. Everybody's life is important to us. Uh, our hope all along was to resolve it peacefully. Uh, certainly, if we believe that there are hostages inside, we take that under consideration. We have a uh, hostage negotiator and tactical team that assess it minute by minute to make the best decision possible. Wheeler also said no shots were fired at law enforcement in this situation. Alexandra, back to you. All right, Camilla, and the woman who was held hostage, has she been able to share any more information with investigators about what sparked such a reaction? Well, again, it sounds like it was a domestic situation, and Wheeler says she's been able to talk to them, give them a few more details, but she's still pretty shaken up from the whole situation. All right, Camilla, thanks. And you can stay up to date on all of the latest information from Friday's standoff, all of it online at KETV.com and on our KETV app. We'll be updating those throughout the day as our crews learn more, and our reporters will also be posting new details to Facebook and Twitter.